Hi, everybody. So sorry. We just went live uh, from my phone and it kept doing like interruptions and stuff like that. So I just thought I'd just cancel that, delete it, and let's start fresh. Okay, so let's go ahead and get started because I do not want to waste your time and we have a lot to cover. So my name is Mindy Wender and I have been a coach for eight years. Um, I am the founder of Team Go-Getters, so I don't know what it is Nikki said. It was like I'm her great, great, great grandmother coach or whatever, but when she asked me to speak on this, I was so excited to speak for her and Katie and all you guys because, um, first of all, like I said before on the last live, they're just awesome people. They're so down to earth. They're so kind. They care so much about their teams. They're great leaders, and I've learned so much from them. Um, and they've, and so has my team. So has my team. They just inspire so many people. They're hard workers. They're determined. They're disciplined. They're go-getters. So when she said, do you want to speak? I'm like, hell yeah. Like, tell me when and where I'm going to do it. So, um, so what I was saying before I kept getting interrupted is you're going, this call is going to be like, probably make you feel good. Sure. Um, you're probably going to be motivated. Great. But I'm going to drop some knowledge and it's the knowledge that you're going to need to take notes on. So you're going to want to take notes because something happens in when you hear something, something happens in your brain when you actually take what you've heard and you write it down. Okay. Like smart people, successful people take notes. So you really, really, I don't, I, unless you're driving, that is your only, only excuse that you are unable to finally get to see it live. Sweet. Um, okay. So people are coming on, people are seeing it. I'm, I'm so happy. Um, but yeah, so taking notes is key. So first of all, let's just start off with a couple of things that I wanted to share before we go into like what I did. So today what we're going to talk about is how I built this business, how I went from earning, you know, working 50 hours a week and doing these things, which I'll share a little bit about my story in a second, but how I created a six figure business and now it's a seven figure business, but like how? Right. So for those of you who don't know, like I said, I've been a coach for eight years. When I first got started, I was just a new mom. My son was eight months old. My husband was laid off from his job um, and we were stressed. We were broke as a joke. We were on state assistance and um, I didn't have any business background. I didn't have any fitness background. But what I did have is the passion to start taking care of myself, start making myself a priority, right? And so you guys probably relate to that, right? That's probably one of the reasons why you wanted to get started. I didn't even know there was anything about anything to do with coaching. I just loved Turbo Jam at the time. It was like a program that I did before I had uh, Lane, my son, and I wanted to get back into it, right? So long story short, I, I found out about it on social media. I started I didn't, wasn't like those people, those coaches that you hear that went diamond in like 30 days or diamond in 90 days. That just wasn't my story. It took me a minute longer. And the reason why it took me longer is because I was starting at a different chapter that some of these other people, if you hear coaches and you're comparing yourself to a coach who's been diamond in 30 days, and now you're saying, well, I didn't do that. So I, I'm, this must not be for me. That's bullshit. It's complete bullshit. The, the way everyone starts at a different level. Some people might already have confidence. Some people might already have business background. Somebody may already have a before and after. Whatever it is, we all have a different story. So you need to put blinders on. That's what I did. I put blinders on and I just said, figure it out. Tell me what to do and I'll do it. And I had to put blinders on and just do it. You know, stop comparing myself to these other people who joined at the same time as me and they're seeing all the success because you know what? It will all even out. It will all even out. Um, as long as you have a vision, you have goals in mind and you are ready to go for it and do this, um, it will happen. You know, you just got to stay the course. You have to stay focused. You have to have, put those blinders on and just do your crap, basically. So um, I was very, very insecure, very shy. Uh, had so much fear about this business that was holding me back. So why I didn't take off like that, like a lot of other people, is because I really had to work on myself. I had to work on getting over my shyness, building my confidence, you know, um, putting myself out there a little bit more. And it took a little bit more extra time for me than maybe somebody else. So once I got there, though, it was like, 
I have arrived, baby. No, I'm just kidding. It still was like, I was still obviously working on myself. But once I started believing in myself and started building my confidence um, and actually started to stop dabbling, because that's what I did a lot of time. I said I was doing my stuff, but I was really just dabbling here and there, like getting on one call a month, you know, talking to, presenting the business like once out of two months that I was a coach or whatever. But I would be, at first I was like, why isn't this working for me? I'm doing all this stuff. And Janelle's like, okay, did you do this? Whatever it was, asked me a question. I'm like, well, no. And then she's like, well, well, did you do you present the business to other people? I'm like, well, never. You know, like I had to give myself a reality check. And that's when I, when I gave myself that reality check, I was at the point in my life and in my business where I finally had worked on myself personally through personal development and positive affirmations and goal setting and all that. And I said, you know what? I got home one day and it just like something, and this could be your moment. That's why I'm sharing this. Have today, you get to decide when your moment is. I decided. I was like, I'm going to go to Janelle tonight when I get on my computer after work and I'm going to say, tell me what to do and I will do it. So allow this, and I'm going to tell you what to do today. So allow right now, this point in time to be your moment, your moment where I walked into my home and I said, that's it. What, I mean, why am I sitting here for two months being a coach and I'm not doing what I could do with this? So I'm not getting anywhere. The time's passing anyway, right? Two months is going by anyway. So I either can have the results or not have the results, right? Okay, so that's where I was. And now I'm going to share with you a few things that were on my heart this morning that I wrote down that I was like, before I go into like, uh, did, 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 do this, 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 the tasks that I did to get to where I am, I want to share a couple of mindset shifts to just ponder, to think about that might inspire you and might speak to you. Um, so the first thing is this. Um, and this, I was at an event this weekend, uh, Shalene Johnson's Marketing Impact Academy, and she shared a story that something that uh, somebody had said to her years ago. And it just, this, this it spoke to me because that's exactly, it, it's exactly what I experienced. So, um, and I shared this on my snap. So if you follow me on snap, you may have already heard this. I shared this yesterday. Uh, so when, when I'm talking to leaders in my business and when I was going through this myself, I tell, and especially when I'm, I just talked about my leaders about this yesterday. So I'm asked, I'm gonna ask you the same thing I asked my coaches. So in 12 to 24 months, would you, and it's fine if you don't want to, would you want to earn a six-figure income with this opportunity? Would you? Let's see. I want people to chat. Would, would Does a six-figure income, something that you desire, something that's in your vision, something that you want to achieve in 12 to 24 months? So if you're feeling, yes, yes, Mindy, this is something that I want. In my life, this is something I want to achieve. Okay, so I'm going to tell you today exactly how to do that, right? I'm going to tell you how to do that, of course. Absolutely. Okay, cool. See all the hearts and likes. If you want to do that in 12 to 24 months, I'm here to tell you it's possible. I'm here to tell you you absolutely can do that. And I'm going to tell you today things, to-dos, tasks, to-do, to accomplish those that goal, okay? And guess what? Some of, some of you watching this, either on the recording live or if it's shared later, some of you will do it. And that's incredible. But also some of you won't. But here's the thing you need to remember. All the things that I share today. In 12 to 24 months, you either do them and you're consistent and you believe and, and you really go for it. You have the vision to have a six-figure income, right? So it's doable in 12 to 24 months. But listen. Those who don't, the time is going to pass anyway. 12 months is going to pass anyway. 24 months is going to pass anyway. So whether you do it or you don't do it, it's still going to 12 to 24 months is still going to pass. It's just like with the 80-day obsession. If you co commit to the 80-day obsession, right, we're thinking, oh, my God, it's 80 days. It's 80 days. But listen, 80 days is going to pass anyway. So why not dive into this workout, do your best, follow the nutrition plan, because 80 days are, is going to pass anyway, right? That's, that is like a truth bomb, and it's so basic, and it's so common sense, 
but it's legit. That's the truth. That is the truth. So when you're sitting there every single day, remind yourself of that. Today's going to pass anyway. What do I do with today? I have 24 hours. Like, what do I do with today? Do I do my power hour? Do I get my workout in? Do I drink my Shakeology? Do I grow my network? Do I do all these things that Mindy's going to share today? Do I do those or don't I? The day's going to pass anyway, and it's up to you. So all these people that are going to watch this video, some of you will and some of you won't. Totally cool. But those that do are going to be a step closer, a day closer, a week closer, a month closer, a quarter closer to that goal, to that vision, to that milestone of six figures. Why not make it you? You're the Katie can't make you do this. Nikki can't make you do this. Whoever your upline coach can't make you do this. Stop giving them the power. As much as they, you know, um, support you and mentor you and give you tools like this amazing group that they put together for you, as much as they do, it's quit giving them the power. Give yourself the power. Take the power back and take responsibility for your own business. Katie and Nikki and whoever your coach is, they're not paying your bills, right? They're not going to pay your bills. They're not going to do this for you. They're doing their own. They just believe in you so much because they are such great leaders that they want, they know what this has done for themselves and their coach and, and their business and their family and their future and their future, their legacy and their grandchildren, what this is going to do for that. Right. And they just are so inspired by that. They want to share this with other, they want you to have what they have, but they're not going to do it for you. You need to take the power back and take that responsibility and do your crap yourself. Show up every single day yourself, have the vision yourself, make, keep yourself accountable. Have a friend or your husband or somebody. Have somebody to help you keep you accountable. But at the end of the day, it's on you. Okay? So that's the first thing I want to share is that mindset. Um, and then about leadership, because I know I'm talking to leaders in this group or future leaders anyway. Um, what makes a good leader? What is a good leader? And the, the, the most basic, and I'm, I, I like to shoot you straight if you guys heard me speak. I keep it, I like to shoot you straight. I like to keep it uh, basic. I'm not going to. It, it, it's, I show you straight. Like what I say, it's like you're going to get it. It's, it's basic. It's, it's going to click. Leadership is a transfer of belief. So when you're thinking to yourself, and I know for me, this is the reason why I'm saying this because this is what I think. I'm like, how can I be a leader? Like I'm still, I'm still in the trenches, baby. So is, so is Nikki and so is Katie. So am I. I'm in the trenches, baby. But that doesn't mean that you're not a leader. I'm always reading leadership development books. So what makes a good leader, even if you have just one coach under you or if you're just a brand new diamond, because I'm so pumped seeing all the new diamonds in this group. So I know you're a new diamond and that might be a little bit scary, but don't let fear stop you because all leadership is, is the ability to transfer your belief or to trans, a transfer of belief, a transfer of vision. So helping other people see more for themselves, to believe in themselves, to see the opportunity for what it is, this gift that we have, right? Um, and and to see, you know, to transfer of passion, transfer of passion. So with that said, in order to be a good leader, you must, you must, as I'm talking to all of you deep into your soul right now, you must have belief in yourself and in what you're doing in the products, in the opportunity. You must be optimistic. You must have belief. Because, listen, if you don't, how are you supposed to give that to your people, to your team, if you don't have it? And it's something that you, if you don't have and it's not strong right now, who cares? Dive into personal development. Start looking at other transformation stories and success stories like mine, Nikki's, Katie's. Online, there's so many success stories with Beachbody. Quit feeding your freaking brain with the, the stories or videos of people who left the company because they're blame shifting. They didn't, they didn't work their business for a year, and now the business isn't working for them, so they switched companies. Who the frick cares about them? You have this amazing opportunity. Fill your mind with positive books, positive personal development positive success stories of people who are making a difference. Like for my daughter who has autism, do you think that I waste my time looking at videos of other moms complaining about all the bad things and all the 
you know, hopelessness? Am I going to go talk to a doctor who doesn't believe the same things I believe? Like my doctors, like, trust me, I don't care if you're like the top autism specialist. If you don't believe that a child can be completely healed and recovered from autism, I'm not going to surround myself with you. Sorry, sweetheart. It ain't happening. And you shouldn't either with this business. If somebody doesn't believe in this business, in the products, in the, in the whole thing, you shouldn't, shouldn't surround yourself with them. Don't waste your time. Don't feed, let the, don't let that into your brain because now you have a responsibility as a leader to transfer belief, to transfer passion, to transfer vision. You have a responsibility. You don't have time for it. You don't have time. Okay. Um, 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 um. So yeah, you want to be able to effecti effectively share that vision with customers. That's what makes a good leader. And so if you think to yourself right now, uh, I don't feel like my I, I really have been vocal with my team about my vision. Get, huddle up. Have a goal. Have a vision for the team whether it be elite or two star or five star gather together say this is what we're going for i have this big vision and then guess what there's like football coaches that have these big visions that speak to their their players and they're like we're going to win the super bowl or whatever it is okay and then let's just say they get to the super bowl and they lose guess what that coach goes in the locker room and says after that game he didn't say okay well we missed the goal no he talks about next year then they still have the vision. So even after you hit the goal or miss the goal or whatever, keep talking to your team about the vision. The vision doesn't go away. You keep going. You keep growing. And you keep transferring that vision and that belief, okay? So you have to be able to speak that vision to your team. Um, and another thing, even for yourself, to manage yourself, think of it as like a telescope where you're seeing the future in your vision and you're visualizing it and you're writing it down and you're sharing it with other people right but then think of like a microscope so like the telescope is the vision and then the microscope is how you're making that happen on a daily basic basis this I learned from a book hmm I have to tell you what the book is I'll have to look it up later but it's uh, it's just with such a good analogy I'm a visual person so I'm like oh I can see that 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 makes sense to me so telescope is the big picture the vision of where you guys are going as a team and then the microscope is kind of like the stuff we're going to talk about right now. You know what I'm saying? It's kind of like the day, the daily grind. That's the microscope scope. So every single day you need to look through your telescope and look through your microscope, look through your telescope at where you're going, what the vision is. And it's just a part of you after 21 days of doing the telescope and looking at the vision, it's a part of you. And then you're going to develop. It's also going to the microscope vision. When you look through the microscope, that's, also going to be a part of you because it's going to become habit after 21 to 40 whatever I don't know people say 21 days 30 days whatever you're going to do it for a year 12, 12 24 months and then it's going to just you're going to feel naked when you don't do these tasks every single day that's how it's going to be a part of your day so but you need to every single day have something holding you accountable whether it be I don't know if I have my journal down here I use this I use the uh, Smart Life Push Journal, but everyone is different. Everyone is different. Right? So please don't think that I'm saying you have to use this to be successful. My friend Tara used it for like two days and then she can't. She's doing notebooks and she has like five notebooks. I'm like, you're crazy, girl. I, don't, I would lose half those notebooks. Um, but I do a lot of, of tracking and to-do lists on a spreadsheet too. So I like do two different things. Find out what works for you, but that's like your microscope. So when I go through and tell you guys these things, you need to find what works for you, how your brain works, how you learn, how you best, uh, uh, the best way to keep yourself on track. But that's, you have to keep a microscope scope on your business on a daily basis. Because listen, to get to six figures, you aren't going to do this. You're not going to be able to get to six figures in 12 months to 24 months if you're only going to do this for a week or for a month. We're talking about the long haul here. I'm talking to people, I want people on this call to know that we're not, this isn't, this is a, this isn't like um, a hobby. It can be a hobby, and if you're a hobby coach, great. But for those of you watching this and you see the title and it says six figures, I'm sorry. A hobby coach isn't going to make six figures. A dabbler isn't going to make six figures. So you need to decide for yourself, am I going to be a dabbler or am I going to be a six-figure earner? 
I'm having a feeling that most of you on this call, you're on here because you want to be a six-figure earner, right? Okay, so I'm going to go into this checklist, but you need to be consistent. You need to be doing this every single day um, because the time is going to pass anyway, okay? And so hang on one second. I want to make sure that I'm not that everyone can hear me. I'm going to look at the comments for just one second. Whether you hit the goal or you don't hit the goal, you keep going. Yeah, Walt Disney, um, I know, I'm obsessed with Disney. A quote that you guys should write down because this, so many, so many successful people follow his quote. And a quote is called, keep moving forward. I mean, the quote says, keep moving forward. Keep moving forward. Keep moving forward. If you miss a day of your workout, like I went to Disney and I brought all my sliders and loops and all that stuff had all the workouts downloaded on my phone, and guess what? I think I did it like one or two days of a seven-day vacation. But I got home, and I, I just picked up where I left off. I'm not gonna like quit, <laughs> like that's stupid. If you miss a couple days, get back on that horse and keep going, keep moving forward. If a curveball comes your way, and you have a sick kid in your house, or you're, you end up in the hospital, or you have an injury, or whatever it is, like when Lily was diagnosed with autism, I fell off the wagon for a little bit with my business, but then I picked myself up and I used this curveball. I used whatever the thing that comes to your life. I used it as motivation to keep moving forward. Anything that comes your way, challenges, you need to take the challenge, take the curveball, take whatever it is that has come into your life and try to find good in it. Flip it in a way to motivate you. Flip, like, what if I would have stopped working my business? I have so many moms following me that have kids with special needs that they come to me saying, thank you. My child said their first word because you shared what you did with Lily. Like, what if I just stopped growing my network? And that one person whose child said their first word and their three-year-old who has autism, and I just stopped growing my network because I let that curveball just push. No, you keep moving forward. Okay, let me read these things. Isn't it crazy to think the compound effect of this business? Yes, compound effect. Great book. Mindy never really coaching. Randy Bots might might not be here. Stephanie Chico might not be here, which means making Nikki. I mean, exactly, exactly. And I was telling this to my leaders too, and I promise we're getting to that to 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 do list right now. But I told this to my leaders too. You d you don't understand. When you're out there on Instagram and you're growing your network and you're building that relationship, before you even start this, the, the tasks that we're going to go over in your power hour or whatever you want to call it, you have to get your mind right. Like, think about what you're doing. You have the opportunity. When you, when you open up your phone and go on Instagram and you start building that connection, don't say, okay, ten, I, got, I got 15 minutes to get my 10 follows in. Okay, okay, I'm going to write this person this. That I get it. Trust me, I've been there and I, I still kind of get trapped into that numbers game. But before I work my business, I get my mind right. And I think about, oh my God, look what this business has done for me. I look around my house. I look at my children. I look at my husband's retired. I look at my team and I, I, how I just took my one of my top coaches to the Marketing Impact Academy. She just built her dream home. She, you know, like I think about what this has done for so many people. Look at Nick. I'm speaking on Nikki's call right now. Like if I want to talk to my coach about this and then that coach didn't talk to her coach and that coach didn't talk to Brandy and that coach, it's like the, tr it, it's, um, it's like the, it's like the domino effect. So the one connection that you might be making on Instagram today could be changing the course of not only another girl, another girl's life, like let's just say Nikki, but now she has two children and their life. And then their future children's lives, like it could, it makes me emotional to think about these things. You really need to put that into perspective. It's all about your, it's all about your mindset. It's all about your perspective on what you're doing with this. And if you think, oh God, I'm just dabbling and oh, I'm just making success club point to get a point. You're not going to get the joy that I have, that Nikki has, that Katie has. You really just need to. Think about the big picture. Okay, so I'm gonna drop some bombs now. Okay, I'm gonna go through a list here. Can you guys still see me? Oh, well, how do I know? I can't see you. I think you guys can still see me though. Yeah, I have a list written on this other screen on my computer, so I hope that you guys can still see me. Um, okay, so these things, I'm gonna tell you what, this can lead you to a six-figure income if you are consistent with these things, okay? 
So I'm gonna just go through this list. Number one, I, would, I had 100 friends on Facebook when I started this business. I started to consistently go out on Facebook and then Twitter then, but now I'll just tell you, um, Instagram is huge right now. A great way to build your network very quickly because they don't have like that limit of how many friends that you can add. So on social media every single day, I personally would do 10 new friends a day. Does that mean they added me back? No, but I added 10 new friends a day and I would definitely still recommend. I know Facebook is down by like, ooh, I don't know, a lot of views right now. I can't remember the stats, but I wouldn't, I wouldn't uh, get rid of Facebook. I wouldn't f cancel Facebook out. Obviously, I think that you should do majority of your network growing on Instagram, but then I still think you should do three to five new friends on Facebook a day. And you can, what I do is I, I go to groups that have the same common interests as me, like I'm a Disney freak, um, autism groups, stuff like that. So you figure out what that is for you and just grow your network. Okay, and if you want more information on growing a network, I'm pretty sure you guys probably talked about this in this group or in another group. There's trainings on it. Beware, though, when you go to look for trainings on certain things, because I'm always like telling my coaches, Google it. If you don't know the answer, Google it. YouTube it. The answers are there. That's how I built my business. I just Googled everything. And I want you to do that. But make sure that when you're Googling information about our business, that it's updated. Because social media has changed in the last week. Snapchat has changed in the last couple of days. So you have to make sure that whatever you're doing, make, especially if you're listening to a coach training, make sure it's in the last quarter of 2017 or this year. 2018 would be best because things are changing all the time. But our business and the way we run our business has changed. So I, I have coaches of mine saying, I just watched this video from 2015. I'm like, ah, delete that information out of your brain. It's all changed. So building a network, Google it. Find an updated video. You can learn how to grow your network very quickly on social media. And you better be utilizing social media. You better be. Facebook is free. Facebook Live is free. Doing live videos where you can have tons of interaction with your people. That's where it's at right now, by the way. Facebook Live, Facebook Live, Facebook Live. Instagram and Instagram Stories, that's where it's at. Snapchat, if you're into that. I mean, I love Snapchat, but I know a lot of people are doing Instagram Stories and getting great results, and it's easier to track. So I'm not going to tell you guys you should do Snapchat because I, I don't know. Everyone has to do what works for them. But grow your network, 10 people a day, okay? Number two, you have to host monthly fitness challenge groups. And some people say, well, at your level, Mindy, yes, I'm still hosting challenge groups. It's Janelle Summers. Yes, Janelle Summers is. That's the way. I mean, think about this. That's what we do. That's our responsibility as coaches is to help people in wellness, and of course, we help people start their own business too, but that's where you're gonna get a lot of your business building coaches from your challenge groups. So hosting a monthly challenge group is key. Number three, I would, I some goal that I set for me when I said I wanna hit six figures in 12 to 24 months, I shot for success club 10. I didn't shoot for success club five. Sometimes I fell short and maybe I hit success club five because I had less than 10 points, but majority of the time I was hitting over success club 10. Now, I just want to put a disclaimer here. I wasn't hitting Success Club 50. I don't think I've ever hit Success Club 50, which doesn't mean that you can't do you. But I just say for me, I got to six figures without hitting those numbers. It's cool, but I was more of uh, worried about team building, which I'll get into that. But team building is, like, I would have to say probably like top priority when you're trying to get to six figures. Okay, but Success Club 10 was um, at a very minimum I would shoot for Success Club 10. Number four, I would return my messages regarding the business every single day within 24 to 48 hours. Now, does that mean that every time my phone would ding that I would get on it? Yeah. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> but I would have business hours, which is very hard for me because when I did hear a ding, I would want to like, oh, I need to respond to her. But I was trying to um, show people what to expect. If they, were ex if they saw that I was responding within five seconds of every message, that's what they would expect from me as they got into my challenge groups or as they got uh, joined my team. And I had a family and I worked 50 hours a week. So there was no way that I was going to be able to keep up with that. So I was like, breathe, wait to, to return messages during my work hours, but within 24 to 48 hours for sure. Five, scheduled business hours, as I just said. And, and when you're doing those business hours, 
Um, honestly, I've been so ADD lately. What I've been doing to get myself back on track, because you know how it is when you travel, it's like your hours are different that you work. And because I still work while I'm on vacation, but my hours were different. And then it's like I was in an airport and I was doing more work, chunks of work for longer period of times and then less during the day and whatever. So to get myself back on track this week, I've actually been watching a power hour um, video um, in the Beachbody Champions page. They did a week full, of different coaches every day doing live power hours. I just play the video and do my power hour while they're talking to get myself back on track. Okay. So if you're kind of uh, uh, not organized with your business hours right now, I suggest doing that, watching a live business hour. But schedule your business hours and you have to be very present in the moment during those times because the time is going to pass anyways. So in that hour, two hours, whatever your business hours are, you either get your shit done or you don't get your shit done. But the two hours or an hour is going to pass anyway. And just to let you know, when I was working 50 hours a week and building my business, I hit $1,000 a week by 12 months. Brandy Botts did $2,000 a week by 12 months. So that's why I say 12 to 24 months. Me, I was working full time, which is no excuse, but um, I think $1,000 a week in 12 months is pretty incredible, right? You would take it. So uh, I, I, uh, I just want to tell you how many hours I worked a day because I get that question a lot. So maybe you guys are asking that, but I can't see your comments right now. I did three to five hours every single day on my beach body business. Do I woke up early in the morning, did an hour, maybe two then, probably just an hour. Then I worked on my lunch. And then at 8.30 when I put my son to bed, I gave up TV for a year because my son was more important to me. Simple as that. My son was more important to me than Jersey Shore, which I can't believe I'm saying that because I love that show. But I gave up Jersey Shore for this business. Um, don't worry, I caught up on all the episodes, so it's no big deal. I know everything about that show. But the point is this. You might have to make some sacrifices with your business hours because in order to get to six figures in 12 to 24 months, you're going to have to put in the time every single day. Okay? And I was able to do it with a baby and working full time, so you can too. Number six, I didn't go to bed. I would not let myself go to bed until my power hour was complete. And you shouldn't either. This is your business, right? Treat it like a business. Just like you have to clock in for work, you know, punch in for work or whatever. The same thing. If you don't get your shit done, you don't go to bed. You stay up till 2 o'clock in the morning until you get it done. Which you wouldn't have to do if you're sticking to your business hours. If you're organized, you won't be staying up till 2 a.m. Unless you have like a big project, like a blog you're creating or some training series or something, which you guys shouldn't be doing right now because you have this. You, Nikki and Katie are doing the, that stuff for you. Um, okay, number seven, work out five days a week at a minimum. Sometimes I do more, sometimes less, but I just had a goal for five days a week. I drank my Shakeology every single day. Number nine, oh, that was number eight. Number nine, I add four or more new coaches every single month, and I have to be honest. Four or more new coaches a month is fine, okay? It's totally fine. I've seen people get to six figures adding five coaches a month. I have to be honest, though, I added more than that. I just did, when I made this list, I took a poll of all five to 15 star diamonds in the company. I, t I did a poll and I asked questions and I, I really like dove in because I want to understand not just what I did to get there, but I wanted to understand what everyone, like all these six figure earners in this company, like how'd you get there? And then I took a poll and that's how I came up with this list. So it's not just me. This is legit. This is like how everybody grew their business in this company. Um, but um, most that was the average four was the average amount of new coaches that people were adding to get to six figures and in, in uh, but to get there in 12 to 24 months you might need to add five would be a minimum eight would be okay I think I would add probably 10 coaches a month on average I mean then there was weeks that I had 10 coaches in a week so you're gonna have like busy weeks and slow weeks but on average throughout a 12 month period it was probably like five to ten coaches a month probably closer to 10 though. Okay. So I just want to be honest with you with that. Um, number 10, I do it about, uh, let me go back to number nine. You should highlight number nine because it's almost, oh, I don't, I don't want to say it's impossible, but it's almost impossible to get to six figure, six figures. If you're not building a team, team building is needs to be your focus. If you're not presenting the business five times a week, there's an issue. You need to start, and that's probably the reason if you're not doing it, it's probably fear. 
it's probably fear or it's either fear holding you back. So you're creating these stories in your head of like, people are going to say, no, people are going to think I'm weird, whatever it is. So it's either fear or number two, it's, you're not build growing your network. So if you're like, no, it's not fear. I want to present the business, but I have no one to present it to. That means that you're not growing your network. So that's why growing your network is number one on this list, because without people to talk to, who are you going to present the business to? Who are you going to invite to your opportunity uh, or your sneak peek groups? Who are you going to invite to your challenge groups? You, that needs to be number one thing you do every single day is add people to your network. So then you have people that you've been building a relationship with who you can present the business with too. Okay. So number nine, highlight that shit because that is super important. Number 10, I uh, do a getting started right call or whatever you want to call it, like a new coach call with all your new coaches, no matter what number, because you got to get them started off on the right foot. And um, when I'm on the call with them, I'm very, I'm very me. Like I'm nice. I hope you guys think I'm nice, but I am nice. But I also, I'm like, okay, so if that's, what are your goals? That's the first thing I ask. What's your why? What's your goals? Based off what you told me, here's how you're going to achieve those goals. And I'm very upfront. Like, if you want this, this is what you need to do. So, and then I make it like, this is just a matter of fact. Okay, all the coaches on my team that are like you, that really have their head on straight, and they really want to go for this, this is what they're doing. So they just think of it as like, this is the norm. This is what everyone's doing. Of course I can do it, you know? So, oh, everyone's hitting success club 10. Okay, I'll do that. Oh, everyone's adding four coaches a month. Okay, I'll do that. Do you get what I'm saying? So like make it seem like this is just the norm when you're on the new coach call. Number 11, find out uh, my new coach's why and goals and help them set up a plan of action, which I just talked about. So basically the power hour to-do list, but I just use the power hour to-do list. But if they say they have one hour, obviously the numbers that they do is going to be smaller. But if they say two hours, I say double that list. Three hours, triple that list. And I tell them the power hour to-do list. 12, I check back in with my coaches often, focusing on their goals, not my goals for them. Because sometimes I'm controlling. My husband will tell you this. And I'm like, because oh, I see the I see potential in everything and everyone. And I just want people to live up to their full potential. And I know what's possible with this business. So to me, I'm just like, oh, no, you got, no, oh, sweetie, 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 you got to do this. But I have to take a step back. Now I've learned. And it's like, okay, it's not, I, I know what they can do, but this is their goals. So I'll let them figure out their goals in their own time. And I'll just share with them my vision. And I'll share with them what's possible. And I'll share with them transformation or success stories with the business. So they can come up with those goals on their own. Do you get what I'm saying? So I just plant seeds of, in them, but I let them create their own goals. Now, sorry, I'm like a recovering bossy person. Okay. Um, so, okay. Da, 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 13. I host monthly coach, uh, training groups. So mine's like, a, uh, I think it's 14 days and it's self paced. So I just add people to the group. They go through it on their own pace. And once they've completed that, then we go into a more, uh, a group that helps them get to Emerald. And then we have a group that helps them get to diamond and et cetera, et cetera. So provide training, provide vision, transfer vision, transfer belief, transfer how to's. Okay. You guys get the point. Um, Number 14, was that? Yeah, number 14, I help people in my downline. I, I don't do training groups. Usually I don't do training training groups that are just for my PS coaches. As Nikki and Katie will tell you, they've taken a lot of my training series that I've done because I feel like it should be open for everybody because there's people in my downline that are going to be uber successful with this and that have vision and really want to go for it. And so I I always open things up and I dig down deep into my downline for up and coming leaders and I help them succeed just as if they were my own. Number 15, I'm growing my Facebook friends list by 20 to 30 people every single week. So what I do is I just write down how many friends I have on Facebook on Sunday nights and then every Sunday I make sure that it's increased by 20 to 30 people. 16, I'm growing my following on Instagram by 20 to 30 people a week as well. Same thing. How many friends do you have on Instagram? Write it down one day a week. And then that same day, the next week, write down that number. And you just want it to always be increasing by 20 to 30 people at a minimum. Okay. 17. I'm putting this opportunity in front of five plus people every single week. Are you doing that? Are you presenting the business five or more times every single week? And based, this is a, a great audio to listen to and to share with your coaches is an audio called Building Your Network Marketing Business by Jim Rohn. Building Your Network Marketing Business by Jim Rohn. 
And he says, on average, when you're first starting out as a coach or as a network marketer, um, you're going to get one yes for every 10 business presentations. So if you're using that to be true, one out of 10, so you decide, okay, if I want to add four coaches a month, I'm going to present the business 10 times a week. You know, you just do the math. And so you help your team do that too. Tell them how to figure that out because they can start um, reverse engineering their goals then. Okay, I need to have eight coaches. That means I need to present the business 80 times. And then that, how my goals in six weeks or four weeks or whatever it is, and you do the math. And I'll tell you guys, anyone who isn't Diamond yet or for your coaches, hitting Diamond in 60 to 90 days is so doable. And the only reason everybody doesn't do it is because they're not doing their crap. They lack belief in themselves. And they're just dabbling. That's really it. it anyone anyone off the street who dove into this business started doing the things we're going over believed in themselves like for me i had to work on myself personally a little bit first um but if they're if they they're ready to go with this it's a no-brainer 60 to 90 days is the goals that you should set for your team i know you can't set goals for your team but to tell your team what's possible 60 to 90 days you should be hitting diamond and it's okay if you don't i didn't either but I'm just telling you, if I, if I knew what I know now, I would have hit it in 60 to 90 days. Okay. Um, okay, let me go through this quickly because I don't want to waste your guys' time. Um, but I still want you to take notes. So I'm gonna, I want you guys to take this notes because you have to write it down. I may or might not be giving you this checklist after this call. But I didn't even want to tell you that because I want you to write it down because remember what happens in your brain. Okay, so uh, 18, read the book Magic of Thinking Big. This is one of the first books I've read, and it was like life changing for me. Just want to make sure that you guys weren't writing me because I just got to think. Um, it really is life changing. I've read that book like ten times now. Re okay, number nineteen. Read the book GoPro. This the whole GoPro series. Oh wait, no, I was thinking um, a different book. What book was? It? Oh, The Go Giver. Go Giver is like one of my first books that I've read in this business, and it really was like. A turning point for me reading that book but read the book book go pro is number 19 number 20 read the book compound effect with in the slight edge which we just spoke about that so um melanie the top coach four years in a row or something is it four years five years three years okay insanity either way the reason why she is so successful is because she applies a slight edge every single day in her life even she even if she doesn't want to go live because she's just not feeling it she does it anyway. Even when she doesn't want to do her workout at five o'clock in the morning every single day, she does it anyway. She is like a beast when it comes to the slight edge, but that's why she's so successful. That's why she's the top coach. Okay, so read those books. 21, I track my progress using a notebook, spreadsheet, Evernote, whatever you're going to use, track your progress. 22, this one um, I wrote down, and this is what other people have said, but I'm going to put a disclaimer on this. Have a success partner or success pod to help you stay on track weekly, which I totally think will help you. But do not call it a success partner. I don't know. This is my belief. It's like when you say, hey, do you want to be my success partner? And the other person's like, yes. It's almost like, hey, do you want to be my girlfriend? Yes, I want to be your girlfriend. So then like maybe that's going great but then maybe the person falls off the wagon and isn't really doing their stuff or, you know, whatever. Um, maybe just doesn't have the same goals as you when you move forward. Now you have to break up and that's awkward. Who wants to, like, you don't want to break up. So here's my advice. And maybe Nikki and Katie and your upline coach will disagree with me. My advice is don't label it. You have to be like Chandler Bing and have a fear of commitment. <laughs> If you guys watch Friends, you'll get that. But you have to just say, let's collab. Let's collab for a little bit to help keep each other accountable. Or let's collab on this new coach thing or this challenge group this month. And then see how it goes. Don't get married to somebody in your first couple months of it as a coach. Because you, you know what I'm saying? Does that make sense? I hope everyone agrees with that. I just don't think we need to put a label on it. Let's just collaborate with other women. And for me. I did have a success partner. I don't anymore. And ever since that one I had in my first two years of this business, and then I had a baby. And so I was like, no, dude, I can't work with anybody right now. I want to focus on my child, blah, blah, blah. Um, ever since then, I just refused to have a success partner. 
I just collaborate with a bunch of women. And then also too, I felt like when I had a success partner, I was cheating on that person if I worked with another coach. And I remember this coach, I won't even tell you the name, but it was somebody very successful, came to me and they were like, hey, can I work with you? And I ran it by my success partner and they were like, oh no, no, that just wouldn't be a good fit for us. And I was like, huh, huh, huh. I was like, whoa, scary. Okay, so let me go through these things so you guys can get off this call. I, I'm telling you all these sorts of stories, but I hope that helps. 23, post on social media a couple times a day. I don't need, I don't think this needs to be like, I need to post, so I'm just going to throw up a quote. Please don't just post to post. Again, we have to think of the big picture and what this awesome opportunity we have. Take it seriously. When you're posting something, have it show your personality. Be funny. Katie cracks me up when she posts funny things. Like, she has the best sense of humor. And I'm always, like, dying and crying when I read some of uh, your posts, Katie. And I'm like, Brad, look what she said. He's like, you're weird. But anyway. Show your followers, your personality, add value, but don't just throw something up to throw something up. Plus, with stories on Snapchat and on Instagram and Facebook Lives, and I'm sure the stories are probably going to take off a little bit more. On, I think they are on, on Facebook, but right now, Facebook Live and um, Facebook Live is like the go-to for Facebook, Instagram Stories and Snap, you're sharing all day long. And people are getting to know you, you're adding value. So definitely do that. But posting doesn't need to be like so dramatic now. But you should be posting. Um, 24, hire an assistant once you get to a start. I hired my first assistant when I was a diamond coach. And I just did 10 bucks an hour for five hours a week. And she just did my busy work, like scheduling certain things for my challenge group, keeping me organized, tracking um, my coach's progress, like telling me, okay, this person has this many success club points, yada, yada. Um, doing recognition reports, stuff like that. Um, 25, follow up with all prospects in a timely manner. Again, you're only going to be able to do that if you're tracking your progress. 26, write down your goals every single week, the same day and the same time. Have it be routine. So every Sunday at 8 p.m., I'm going to write down my goals and review. And, and um, then every single day of the week, during the week, I review my goals. And then again, Sunday, I rewrite them. Okay. Um, 26, oh no, 27, wake up early and whatever your frog is, is it presenting the business? Is it adding to your network? Do that first thing in the morning. So eat that frog every single morning. Um, get seven hours of sleep. Crazy, right? So when I took this poll, a lot of them said they started off their business losing sleep, but they realized sleep was so important for their mental health and for their their overall wellness. And we're in a wellness business, so it's important to take care of your, our bodies. So we don't want to kill ourselves to get to six figures. You don't have to kill yourself to get to six figures if you're organized. Of course, if you get three hours of sleep, like I did in my first couple months before I woke up and was like, okay, I need to get organized because I can't function on this lack of sleep. Um, of course, you're going to get there just as if you got sleep, but why not get sleep and be healthy? right? So a lot of them said seven hours of sleep was key for their success. 29, reading more than 10 pages of personal development daily. So everyone says 10 pages, 15 minutes. Every single person says they do more than 10 pages and they listen to more than 20 minutes. So that was 29 and 30. 31, get on the calls. I'm sure that your team has a weekly team call. Get on that call. Get on the national wake-up call. All the leaders get on the call. Like Janelle Summers still gets on the national wake-up call. I still get on the national wake-up call. You have to always be a student. Don't think, okay, I got to 15 star. I made it. Heck no. It could all be going backwards the next day if you're not moving. If you're not moving forward, you're moving backwards. So you always need to be moving forward. Um, I just want to make sure I got, uh, okay. Watching other leaders to get ideas but don't mock it, make it your own. So you can watch other leaders. I mean, put blinders onto a point, but if it, you're okay with it, look to other leaders to get inspired, but don't copy anything. Just use it and make it your own. Um, let's see. Work from a to-do list every single day. So I like to create my to-do list before I go to bed so I can actually sleep. Otherwise I'm like, oh, I gotta do this, I gotta do that. So before I go to bed, I just pull up my, um, my app on my phone, my uh, 
what's it, Reminders app, and I just brain dump. And then I'm like, oh, okay. It almost feels like it's done when I do that. And then in the morning, I add to it for anything that I forgot or anything that's come up. Okay, so there's that. Um, I'm going to skim through this because you guys are going to get this. I want to skim through to make sure you guys are getting. So do things that make you uncomfortable every single day. Attend Summit. Um, treat your business like a business. And do, I am a leader and always do things I ask of my team. So if you're, if you're telling your team to do X, Y, and Z, you have to be doing it yourself. That's what all these leaders have said, how they got to six figures. They would never ask their team to do something that they weren't doing. Um, make two YouTube videos a month. That's something that a lot of the leaders do. Uh, create systems that are simple for my team. That will save you so much time, so many headaches. Um, when I did that, every time, this is what I did. When I became a diamond coach, every time a coach came to me with a question, I'd write it down. And I had a list of questions. And based off those questions, I started just creating, creating YouTube videos. So then when another coach months later came with that same question, I'd say, oh, here's the YouTube link. Here's the YouTube link. So they would get their answers. But also, um, like my, my new coach training system, I let any coach who wants to go in that group, it's self-paced and it's like day one, day two, day three. They can go in that group and see what I'm doing or send their coaches to it. It's like, it's like an open book, right? So creating these systems of how you get your new coaches started, how do you, um, how you add, or how do you uh, present the business? It's like step one, add people to my network. Step two, find out their needs and wants. Step three, you know what I mean? Get, give, get a system. How do you do what you do? Create a system so then you can get, gift that to your team. Um, uh, da -da, host, what is, co so hosting, what is coaching webinars or sneak peek groups, whatever you want to do, whatever you want to call it, doing this bi-weekly or at least once a month for your team. Christine Dwyer is the, uh, founder of Platinum Presenters, which is the coach or the team that we're all under actually. Um, and she had every Tuesday night had a, what is coaching what is coaching webinar? And the whole downline would utilize that. So you can create that same thing. Like every uh, the two weeks a month, you're going to do a sneak peek group for your team or whatever it is. So then your coaches don't have to worry and have that stress of presenting the business because you're going to help them do that. You're going to do it for them. Um, This is a good one too, so I wanna mention this and then we'll wrap this up because we have like three more and then we're done. I Make a list, make a list of 10 qualities I would want in a coach on my team. And I'm active, actively working on myself in those areas through personal development. So this is really key. Who do you want on your team? What qualities do they have? In order to attract those people to your life and to your business, you need to have those qualities, right? Like attracts like. So whatever the qualities that you want on your team, make a list of those 10 qualities and start reading personal development, listening to podcasts, whatever it is you want to do to grow in those areas yourself. Because the more you grow in certain areas, you're going to attract those people with the same qualities, okay? Um, openly share your fitness and health journey and being vulnerable, real, and connected to the followers, showing them your own example what is possible with these products. So you guys know that. You need to be a product of the product. You need to be vulnerable. You need to be sharing. Um, anytime there's an issue in my life, I'm the type of person that's like, okay, how can we make this good? What's the good in it? What it, God is, God will never give something. God doesn't give something. And I don't feel like God gave Lily autism, but Lily has autism. Now God will make good of it. So anytime, even if it's a small problem, a small problem, God's going to make good of it. So try to find the good and positive in any situation that you're faced with. And then once you do and you kind of overcome it or you're working through it, share that with your people. Add value to other people through the life struggles and what you're going through. Okay? Um, share much more than just about Beachbody on your Facebook. Focus on adding value and network. Okay, so I just went over that. And that's it, you guys. Okay, so I'm going to go back so I can see this video. Okay. Um, okay. So Nikki just said, you guys do that. You're welcome. Okay. You guys, so that is basically it. And I know this was a long call 
There was so much to go through, but it really is basic. It's really basic. And I'm going to give you this checklist so you have it. I hope that you guys took notes though, because like I said, it really, something happens in your brain. But I just want to end with this. I'm from the super small town. My baby was eight months old. My husband was laid off from his job. I was broke as a joke. I had no, I was so extremely shy. Everything was pointing against me. But I believe that I could do this because Janelle said, this is what you need to do and to do it. And there's all these other people doing it. And I dove into looking at other people's success stories and stuff just for inspiration. So I would believe that it was possible. You guys know it's possible. There's so many more success stories out there and you're looking at one here and there's Nikki and like all these people. Okay. So you know, it's possible. So now you just have to believe it's possible for you. Decide right now that you're going to do these things on this checklist that I will give you. You're going to do these things consistently over time. And guess what? I am the type of person that has an all or nothing personality, but I've learned now through personal development that it doesn't have to be all or nothing. Let's just say you're going all in and you want to do this all or nothing, right? You want to just go all in, do this every single day consistently for 24 months till you hit or until you hit six figures, right? And that could happen. Like you could, I did it. I, I was all in, didn't miss a freaking day. Now, let's just say something happens and, and you do 80% of this or 90% or 60% or 50%. Listen, if for some reason you fall off track and you don't do it all and you end up at 80% over a period of 12 months and you're like, eh, I didn't really do 100% of what Mindy said, but I did 80%, guarantee you you are going to be so much closer to that six-figure goal than you would have been if when you fell off the wagon in July or June or whenever it is that you're that you would fall off the wagon, let's just say, and stop working your business for like a week or whatever. And what if you fell off the wagon and you said, "Oh, I'm done now. I'm not going to try to jump back in. I lost momentum. I lost it. Like I'm I'm off track to hit six figures now." No. Even if you miss a day, a week, a month. Jump right back in, pick up where you left off, just like I did with the 80 day obsession. Everyone's ahead of me. Who cares? I don't. And jump right back in, dive in head first, doing these things, and just do your best. You're going to be further ahead if you do your best and do 50% even, or 80%, or 90%. Try to do 100%, but if you don't, oh well. You're still going to be closer to that goal if you had done nothing at all and just gave up. Okay, well, thank you guys for what, tuning in today. I appreciate it. I will add a document in this group with the six-figure checklist. And if you have any questions, just comment on this video, and I will answer them later. All right. Thank you, guys.